Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, I'm going to talk about optical computing. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand what exactly is the problem with our quote unquote current architecture. Now we are hitting a bottleneck and I'm reasonably sure anybody of you are in around their 20s or 30s, specifically if you are touching 40s, you would have no noticed something very peculiar with our computer architecture. It's basically uh, from early 1990s, our uh, basically CPU speeds were going ludicrously high. We basically went from 1 gigahertz to 2 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz and then we kind of plateaued out around uh, 3.5. Right now that plateau is around 4 gigahertz, but you get the point. It's like we kind of set out even though like very early on like people were using liquid nitrogen to achieve like you know 8 gigahertz uh, you know overclocking and we were expecting like you know that will become the next standard thing but that never happened it's kind of plateaued out it's like we are barely touching 5 gigahertz and heck even 4 gigahertz is unheard of in server space uh, there are reasons for that primary of which is electrons are slow if you want to move them from point a to point b uh, again there is an inherent limitation to that like for it's not photons, it's not massless. So it does have a fundamental limit how fast it can travel in, in a medium, be it copper, be it uh, silicon. So there is a limit to that. And if you try to push it much faster and much harder, your power consumption will go ludicrously high. And that you can easily see compared to an enthusiast grid processor versus a server grid processor. Servers are being run by like you know, 24 into 7. So power efficiency, basically how much wattage you are consuming for how much teraflops of computation, uh, it's much more important, like teraflop per watt, as they say. So for that reason, they will always go for efficiency because they have to run it 24 into 7. So you will easily notice that, hey, if I keep the frequency low around, uh, now again, that has slowly creeping up. So in uh, basically early 2010, uh, you are talking about like 2 gigahertz and now it's like 3 gigahertz at this point in time. You are seeing even server processors that can touch 4 gigahertz, but generally they are down for maximum efficiency. So there is an inherent limitation. Now, what does that all translate to? That all translates to we are reaching what we call more slow slowing down. So more slow was like a uh, country projected and it is going strong and there is a very good reason for that like the better it goes the more our industry expands more capable we become the more in economic growth happens because of that so there is a lot of incentive to keep it going it's not just like uh, okay it's a luxurious thing no it's a necessary thing like people's livelihood depend on it so it must keep going on and the fact that it's slowing down that's a, like a you know, cause for alarm so we are talking about photonics now. Be mindful, this is one of the contenders that could replace that. Uh, we have many other contenders also like uh, quantum computer. So photonics, uh, the idea with photonics is rather simple. It's just like, uh, it's not trying to do with something quantum and all that jazz. It's just trying to take the electrons, replace that puppy with photons. Now, what will happen if you do that? Well, one interesting thing, rather than marketing gimmick, you can fundamentally legally say that light speed calculation, literally, you are actually computing at light speed. So that's the whole thing. Now, photons does have lot of properties unique properties and many times people may you know kind of intermingle with this uh, you know using quantum computers some people say no you cannot call a photon computer quantum computer some say because it is exploiting some quantum phenomena you have to say it eh, messy definition but photonics just photonics dealing with photons and the whole idea with this is rather than dealing with superposition of a quantum computer is just dealing with like hey electron has been replaced with photon that's it done now photon does carry some unique abilities one of which is photon has of different wavelength basically let's say uh, red blue green yellow these sort of thing they will not interact uh, with each other even if they are in the same place for example uh, when you talk about a data line let's say a physical copper line uh, talking to let's say graphics card and uh, processor it can only send one uh, thing at a time so it cannot have multiple channels of data now, again it can use uh, uh, timing signals generally use that is like okay time one uh, signal for uh, person one time two signal for person two it can be done timing based or it could have like a combined system it's like hey uh, i'm sending like if the voltage is five volt it means this if voltage is uh, like 1.5 volt it means this so you get the point like it's very difficult to send multiple data and physics wise you cannot you are not sending you're just using clever mechanism on photon system you can fundamentally send as many as you want like as long as you can make them uh, laser wise basically as long as your laser and detector equipments are good enough you can send one link through a fiber cable to link through a fiber cable or 200 link through a fiber cable fiber simply would not care photons simply does not care that's a very unique property uh, property and that's why we are using uh, fibers as currently uh, making this video as a backbone of our entire planet so that unique ability is very awesome for us that means even if one we have one pipeline we can send multiple inter uh, you know uh, pipelines going one way or the other way without any issue like proper duplex without any issue then we come to another aspect even though photons of different wavelength will not interact with each other photons of same wavelength will interact for example and not to mention 
you can fine tune it how it interacts for example you can have what we call destructive interference so your laser let's say have a illumination of 10 and uh, you caused a uh, destructive interference the illumination will go to zero done gone blank even though laser is on the output would be off and then uh, you could have what you call constructive interference where you can have like let's say 5 uh, 10 10 of 2 and they are constructively the output will become 20 you are amplifying it so uh, these things allow us to make logic gate if you are careful with this so what does this mean this think of this way same thing happened with uh, fiber communication we had undersea fiber cable very long ago like most people will be shocked how long ago we actually achieved that problem was we were always taking photons converting them into electrical signal and then boosting it up and then uh, retransmitting it okay it did work like we had undersea fiber cable but you can understand every time even though photons has to be changed there is a latency involved it's like it's not happening at light speed and i talked about like light speed calculation so we created something known as direct uh, transmission boosters basically we had a medium that was like doped with uh, other lasers those lasers were continuously firing but the moment a pulse of laser that is your main data go through it it got amplified directly without slowing down that is a critical answer. like pipe is going 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 the moment it was like that quote unquote doped area amplified so basically it had like one watt of energy when it was coming here it got to 10 watt of extra energy while leaving and we can take light speed amplification and that's how our whole entirety of undersea fiber cable works fundamentally speaking so same thing uh, we are trying to do with computers it's like hey you you are uh, talking about a world where we have fiber coming to the home i have fiber connection to the home what if we instead of converting it into a router we directly plugged it into a system that did not convert uh, the photons into electrons they are like just photons maybe re-amplified of course uh, to compensate for signal loss but like nothing more than it's just and all that at light speed so your processor your processing your computation everything happens at light speed it's like no hoo-ha just like light came in light came went out the end you don't have conversion if we can achieve that super amazing high speed computation will become possible again because it is light speed computation so what parts do we need to do that because because if you are familiar with electronics you know we have multiple things and one of the core important aspect is transistor uh, then we have resistor then we have capacitor then we have integrator. these are like fundamental what is there in uh, when you look into a uh, processor so for uh, basically photon systems uh, we have optical amplifier we have phase modulator we have polarization converters and we have waveguide so all these things are coated now again they are not one-to-one -one conversion for these but you get the point like we still have dynamics we can control same way we make a circuit for basically electrons we can do that for photons also and uh, so you in photon ways you have a uh, three core factors and now again more can be involved depending on your design we have polarization we have phase we have intensity all these things combined does allow you to have the abilities like same way voltage have uh, like your electricity electrical signal could have voltage uh, polarity ampli uh, basically ampere same can be done with here and the core reason why our electronics industry is so advanced is simply because all that like hundreds to millions to billions of transistor can be packed into one tiny chip that can be done with uh, basically that photons also nowadays that's possible now it cannot go down as small as uh, electronic thing because you have to understand if you are familiar with uh, a nanometer you know for a fact that we have system that can go down to five nanometer at this point in time even smaller should be achievable quite soon but uh, if you uh, pay attention to laser system you know even blue laser is not that nano like nanometer wise not that small so fundamentally by the laws of physics it said by the wavelength that we want to utilize it cannot actually go very small so fundamentally on a physical level there is a limit how small this puppy can go it cannot go very very small uh, there are some people trying to bypass that but as of now me making this video uh, most likely it can be faster but it will be bigger also but it will be efficient so people are like uh, there are many options where you have tunable uh, dbr lasers you have multi-wave lasers which allows us to like, think of it this way you can have a uh, data point going from let's say your uh, ram to your processor and it could have only two fiber links but it those fiber links itself could have like hundreds of independent laser data points going back and forth without any issue no issue with that and then you have ring lasers that will actually boost up the signal uh, picosecond laser course if you want to super amplify it phase modulator a lot of things are there a lot of things we have uh, with this that's these are the parts that we utilize inside one silicon like uh, or one uh, what we call package to make what we want to do so what is the hope with this kind of super advanced technology that we are talking about here now it is much more energy efficient because everything is happening in one phase you're not converting it uh, again and again and again and again so there is uh, that efficiency aspect another reason is it allows petahertz electronics to give you a context of how fast petahertz is it's like a uh, hundred 
add one more basically 10 hundred thousand gigahertz it's ludicrously idiotically fast it's so fast that it would be literally like think of this way your camera uh, right now let's say a self-driving car could have let's say a camera running at 10,000 frame per uh, thousand frame per second and for a computer's point of view the world is running at like you know one tenth of the speed so it can like you know calculate like how to drive your car how to avoid collision things like if you utilize this puppy it would be like it's like flash it's like uh car is crashing okay let me tell uh, what is the accelerometer data okay accelerometer data is like that like everything is happening crash is happening and mid time it can calculate okay uh, cars left side has the most uh, good crash zone okay apply brakes on the left wheel send the signal there it knows that fact because it's so fast it knows that like it, there will it will take time to send signal to that point it's like okay wait for that and uh, during this time uh, seat belts tighten the send signal for tightening the seat belt uh, make sure we have extra uh, high priority data signal for emergency backup so like all that is happening it's, it literally would the computer would be so fast from its point of view it would be like the world is running in slow motion that's how fast that is that's like flash level fast now it is considered to be at this point in time next step in computation because again same way our uh, in communication infrastructure went from like of uh, if you are very luxurious, very rich kind of people who can afford two Mbps to like, dude, I have 300 Mbps connection in my home. I ain't got time for this. So same thing could happen with uh, photonics also because you have to understand this silicon wafer technology turbocharged us. Same can be done with this. Uh, now, again, there are uh, multiple alloys, multiple uh, materials uh, that are being utilized for this because this is not uh, quote unquote one to one. It's not exactly made out of silicon. Sometimes they use silicon as a substrate. Sometimes they utilize some other uh, systems. However, and generally it's assumed it's around 20 years back. So if you want to understand where this technology is, go 20 years back. So we have things, we have actual terahertz radio frequency circuit all made into one chip at this moment in time. It is utilized in many mobile towers, many data centers right now. It's a real thing, it's already being used. But like, you know, uh, to go from communication to actual computation, that has not happened yet. So uh, many people, that is the biggest advantage of this optical system. Like people talk about like quantum computer as like next big thing. Have you ever used one? You have already used the photonic system. It does not require re re reimagining everything. It does not require liquid helium and all that jazz. So in those sort of contexts, there are there are places where quantum computer will, uh, you know, serve us well. But most places it's not that. It's just like most computational algorithm, we built our computation infrastructure on what we could do, not what we cannot do. So quantum computer, right tool for the right job. But for most job, it's not useful. But photonics, it has the potential to flat out take over our silicon industry. It's like silicon disappear photonics come here so that's the amazing aspect of it it does not require like you know completely reimagining the whole coding language where it's like okay uh, instead of bits we have qubits which has like eight superpositions so you know completely uh, reimagining can be done and uh, the whole point of that utilizing light itself to do computation is already available you if you have the bank balance you can buy a compute card that utilize the abilities of light the properties of light to process that like uh, what we call compute cards at this point in time are available that utilize this photonic system itself and in communication again the whole communication industry is going growing simply because of this and at this point in time uh, during that like you know pic like photonics integrated circuit some have achieved like you know 200 gigahertz uh, gigahertz i'm saying like 200 gigabits per second it's like and this time it's like idiotically weird so there is a lot of hope and real reason to be excited about this now i uh, raised you guys up i need to bring you down to earth so let's compare it to silicon now one thing many people then like uh, Moore's law is ending at this point in time no it's not we have more than enough room left and at this point in time the most biggest problem people face at this point in time everyone it's better software integration is missing that's the whole point we are not in a position where it's like oh dude i really wish my phone had more computational power that's not a complaint of people people's complaint is dude why the heck the app is not optimized why the heck are like you know if i press back here it goes back and keep going back rather than going to the home page basically software integration is not done properly at this one and that's the core reason why iphone one while it did had a very inferior processor did manage to outpace uh, android for upwards of three generations simply because of integration proper uh, done properly so at this point in time most people complain is not coming from oh i really wish I, instead of like you know seven terahertz i had like eight terahertz why i'm saying teraflops seven teraflops i really needed 14 teraflops nobody's saying that but integration wise that's a very big uh, issue right now i can give you one simple example i had one video file of uh, apollo uh, 12 uh, Apollo 11, pardon me, and it was like very heavy file. Here's the my computer tried to run it through directly through the processor, and it was chugging along like there is no tomorrow. Then I changed my player and directly played through my graphics card, and it was awesome. 
but here's the deal why the heck i needed to do that and that's the biggest problem at this point in time with people it's like we have the tools horsepower is there it's just like software people is like they're not using it like for example uh, whenever i make my video it's like i have a graphics card i have a very powerful graphics card i have gts 1070 founder edition it's more than good enough to handle this full hd stream to compress that and like you know make up final package it should be like bro don't even give a damn about it it's like bro do it on the background but my operator uh, the video editing package is like yeah i'm gonna bake this through cpu why now this is the issue right now the biggest hurdle is not a low we don't have enough horsepower it's just like implementation of that horsepower it's like just you know our wheels are slipping we need grip we need traction control then many other issues are also there for example i provided a video number that person went into ludicrous de uh, details and uh, one amazing aspect is if you take a bit it's like okay let's process this bit so you send this bit and you process it in our processing let's say that consumed around uh, two joules of energy awesome no problem here's the if you take that uh, same amount of bit that you have processed you take that bit uh, from that core where it was processed to the cache memory it will take 200 joules it's like what the heck like it takes more energy to move joules from point a to point b which should be addressed by uh, this photonic system because again light speed and uh, even in this uh, people are covering or uh, figuring out the idea nvidia that's why they are investing so much in risk system they are super computer compute cards they have this issue where like they have multiple cores but it takes a lot of time to go from core to cache memory so they are like what if we have a sub processor and whose sole job is hey where is your cache memory located like basically in this cache where exactly are you located here go to this core located here go to this core located here just to reduce latency and that has drastic implementation it's like it went from or can barely do this many calculation to like almost triple the calculation or less power consumption so fundamentally we have a lot of other issues that we can solve without reaching oh we can't make it any smaller no no we we have more than enough issues to solve that are solvable with better design we can solve for example improving the instruction set architecture and that was the biggest light bulb moment of arm holdings it was like hey instead of utilizing computer's logic of like hey just put more cores what if we designed different types of core for example uh, this is a samsung's Exynos system we have core x1 super powerful if you really want to go yolo this is your core then you have medium one it's like hey if you're doing something intensive you know hdr content video recordings and all that it's like we have a, a series 78 cores then you are like all the things that you have to run 24 into 7 for example your mobile communications your display uh, basically everything that you need to run battery charging and all that just run it on a55 this idea of big and little core, that was the most amazing idea. It's like, and fundamentally, it's inherently more power efficient. For example, like uh, teraflops per watt, it's mind bogglingly high. That's why this uh, Apple's M1 chip can compete against uh, Intel chips, uh, like consuming 30 to 40 percent more. Percent, why I'm saying percent more? It's like 30, 40 watts versus 10 watts. It's like, and this beats all of them. It's like, bro, don't even come close to me. So that's the reality of it. We had a lot of design issues before we reach a point. It's like, oh, if we really needed like, you know, more nanometers now. We got this. We are more than good enough. We just have to improve the design. So instruction set architecture improvement, big and small cores, these things are alone will keep us occupied for more than enough time. So at this point in time, uh, while I'm making this video, I'm reasonably sure by 2040, we will not even worry about this. It, yeah, of course, there will be hundreds of videos like, you know, most of all it's ending, but we have more than enough smart people, more than enough physical problems to solve, more than enough solvable solutions, uh, deployable solutions that for 20 years, we good, we golden. We don't have to be like, okay, quantum computer, can quantum computer replace the system? We are solid, we are golden. I can easily see quantum Quantum computer working for certain applications. I can easily see photonics replacing most of the heavy uh, lifting. Mobile phones may still use uh, non-photonics simply because photonics making it small is difficult. However, even if it's like made it uh, bigger than let's say your current uh, mobile phone system, uh, but if it is efficient enough, let's say 20 to 30 times more efficient, it may uh, we may sacrifice the battery life for that. But again, if it's efficient, we will not notice it. So interesting things is going to happen. But at this point in time, do not worry about it. It's like silicon is here and photonics still have some room to grow. So this was my presentation on Photonics Computer. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to uh, press this like, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.